Hello and welcome to the 49th episode of Jazzology presented by Savage Content. I'm your host, Willard Jenkins. We're here alternating Fridays giving two jazz fans the opportunity to compete against each other for a chance to win $100. Each contestant will be asked a question worth two points. If they're unable to answer correctly, their opponent will have a chance to steal the question for one point. We will ask 10 questions, and at the end of the 10 questions, the person with the lowest score will get a bonus question for the opportunity to tie the score. If they're successful, the game will go to sudden death. The person in the lead at the end of regulation will go first, and each contestant will take turns trying to answer the sudden death multiple choice question until we have a winner. Our reigning jazzology champion is Roz Burnett, who is a Brooklyn-born saxophonist, composer, educator, and musicologist. Roz comes from a family of saxophonists and has a BA in music studies and an MFA in music composition. His other contributions are in music therapy and he lectures on free jazz and social movements. Our challenger for this 49th episode of Jazzology is Brad Farberman, a returnee to Jazzology. Brad Farberman is a musician and writer based in Brooklyn, New York. Brad is recorded for the rope dope label and written for the New York Times, Village Voice, Billboard, and NPR. He is the jazz curator at Tidal. All right, now let's get to today's Jazzology. And as our reigning champion, Roz goes first. You ready, Roz? Yes, yes. Happy New Year. All right. Roz, <laughs> pianist Les McCann recently joined the Ancestors on December 29th. Les McCann dedicated his tune, Tell Them About It, to his buddy, Carl Perkins, who played what instrument? What instrument did Les McCann's buddy Carl Perkins play? Did he play A, the guitar, B, the piano, C, the saxophone, D, the drums, or E, none of the above? Well, I think that, um, you know, may, may Les McCann rest in peace, of course. And, um, I'm remembering him uh, in some past interviews, mentioning people who were close to him and even people who were mentors, like even though they were peers age-wise. Mm -hmm. So um, from what I'm remembering and uh, also from the musical history where he was from, uh, I'm going to say that it was B, piano. Yes, indeed. The Carl Perkins that Les McCann wrote about and us tune told him about it was indeed the late pianist Carl Perkins, not to be confused with the guitarist Carl Perkins. So, Brad, your turn. You ready? I'm ready for this invitation to open this. <laughs> All right. Les McCann, well, you got it. You nailed it. <laughs> Les McCann was a native of what city? Was he from Cincinnati, Ohio? A, was he from Covington, Kentucky? B, or C, Louisville, Kentucky? Or D, San Francisco, California? Or E, Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, no. Despite my joke, I'm struggling to remember where he's from. There's a lot of Kentuckys here. So I think I'm going to try a Kentucky. Was he from Lexington, Kentucky? That is correct. Les McCann was indeed a native of Lexington, Kentucky, the home of the Kentucky Derby. All right, Ross, your turn. Okay. Okay, Ross, NEA jazz master, pianist, and composer, Muhal Richard, 
was a graduate of one of the great mid 20th century high school music programs at DuSable High School in Chicago under the direction of a man known as Captain Walter Diet. Which of the following other jazz greats also came out of that program? Would that have been A, Julian Priester, B, Johnny Griffin, C, John Gilmore, D, Richard Davis, or E, all of the above? Yeah, once again, um, based on things that I've heard uh, the musicians listed saying about how they studied, especially that um, Chicago history, uh, I'm going to say all of the above. That is correct. Boy, we're, we're, we're batting a thousand today. It was indeed all of the above came from Captain Walter Diet's program at DuSable High School. Julian Priester, Johnny Griffin, John Gilmore, Richard Davis, they all came out of DuSable High School. All right, your turn, Brad. Drummer Walter Perkins and bassist Bob Cranshaw formed a band in 1957 called the Modern Jazz Trio Plus Three, or as it was shortened to be the MJT Plus Three, with original pianist Harold Mayburn. Who was the original saxophonist in the MJT Plus Three? Would that have been A, Eddie Harris, B, John Gilmore, C, Johnny Griffin, D, Frank Strozier, or E, Von Freeman? Great question. I have one of these records somewhere over there. You can't see the records, but they're over there. <laughs> see. Um, more, more, more Chicago-centric uh, yep. questioning. I don't think it was Eddie Harris, although it could have been. Gilmore, probably too busy with the orchestra. I don't believe it was Von Freeman. Um, I'm going to try Frank Strozier. That is correct. Letter D, alto saxophonist Frank Strozier was the original saxophonist in the MJT plus three. And I see we got a spirited competition happening today. Ross, your turn. Okay. The alto saxophonist Paul Desmond, who composed the Dave Brubeck Quartet's signature classic, Take Five, Paul Desmond also led several bands that included which of the following musicians? Was that A, Jerry Mulligan, B, Chet Baker, C, Jim Hall, D, Ed Bickert, or E, all of the above? Now, based on what I'm remembering, about Paul's history and the instrumentation he used? That's a very good question. I'm going to go with C, Jim Hall. That's incorrect. Okay. Brad, the alto saxophonist Paul Desmond, who composed, composed the Dave Brubeck Quartet's signature tune, Take Five, also led several bands that include which of the following musicians? Would that have been A, Jerry Mulligan, B, Chet Baker, C, Jim Hall, or D, Ed Bickert, or E, all of the above? Okay, I can't say Jim Hall. Nope, Jim Hall has been ruled out. 
Jerry Mulligan. Uh, I don't think so. I'm just trying to think about like a, a lineup where it was Alto and Barry. I don't, I don't, it doesn't seem familiar. It could be Chet Baker, trumpet and alto, but I don't recall that either. I'm going to say Ed Bickert. And you know what? Both of you gentlemen were correct to a certain extent. It's E. All of the above. <laughs> that is the correct answer. Paul Desmond led bands that included Jerry Mulligan, Chet Baker, Jim Hall, and Ed Bickert. So wow. the answer is E, all of the above. This week's spotlight is on a very special collection of previously unre unreleased video interviews featuring legendary African-American icons of music and American culture. Watch Smokey Robinson, Harry Belafonte, Dionne Warwick, B.B. King, and Herbie Hancock share stories and insights about their careers, music, inspirations, American society, and more. Just amazing insights and wisdom with a historical perspective. This collection is released in honor of Black History Month. Visit savagecontent.com to view this episode, that would be youtube.com slash at savage content for that ep episode. And uh, this episode spotlight recording of the week comes from the 20 year old pianist, Joey Alexander, someone we've been hearing since he was nine years old. His latest recording is called Continuance on the Mac Avenue label, our spotlight recording of the week. And these two gentlemen have both played jazzology previously, so they've asked our essential question about how they fell in love with jazz. But let's see what they're ha what's happening with them these days. Brad, tell us what are you up to this these days, jazz wise? Um, listening wise, listening wise, performing wise, writing wise. What's on the top of your list? Sure, sure, sure. Um, I will mention. Uh, Yesterday, so uh, I work at Tidal, the streaming service. Right. Uh, I'm the jazz curator, and I also uh, head up the online magazine. Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday, I published an interview that I did with Abdullah Ibrahim. Oh, great! Uh, this is about his la his latest recording. His latest recording, which came out about a week ago, which is so so beautiful. Um, yes. Kind of a unique lineup. It's piano, cello, and flute. Mm -hmm. And um, they're doing uh, a lot of things, but they're doing some of his older pieces for this new instrumentation. And uh, it's just really gorgeous. And it was an honor and pleasure to speak with him just over the phone. And uh, yeah, I encourage everyone to read it, uh, not for me, but for him and for all the beautiful things that he says. Well, you know, the, the Abdullah Ibrahim is, is, is one of a kind. You know, he really is. So thanks for that tip on Abdullah Ibrahim's latest recording. Ross, what are you up to these days? Yes, listening wise, I've been enjoying um, the recent issues of uh, Hassan Ibn Ali's music. It fills in some very good gaps. The, the, the legendary Hassan. Legendary Hassan, yes sir. Right. We just had that one record for the longest and- um, right. I'm really enjoying, uh, well, I know missing link is an overused term, but um, I'm glad that some gaps are being filled in. And I've been playing, I'm doing a Jazz Vespers uh, show at St. Peter's Church on uh, February 18th, the Jazz right. Tree, playing some standards and opening those up. And uh, actually, this weekend I'll be in Kingston, Ontario, doing a couple of performances and a uh, one lecture for Black History Month. Also, all right. Well, sounds like sounds like sound. You guys are both pretty busy these days. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brad, played a lot together. What's that? Was it? Me and Brad played a lot together. All That's right. Cool. Yeah. Ho hopefully, more in the future. All right. So let's get back to our questions. And it's Brad's turn. Brad, the pianist 
Aaron Goldberg, who played last week in collaboration with Cuban musicians at the 39th Annual Jazz Plaza Festival in Havana, has recorded with which of the following artists? As Aaron Goldberg recorded with A, Wynton Marsalis, B, the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra, C, Kirk Rosenwinkel, or D, Joshua Redman, or uh, E, C and D. Okay. All uh, good choices and uh, all possible reasonable choices. Um, Aaron Goldberg is a pianist, so it, he would make sense to play with any of these people. Winton on trumpet, uh, a whole orchestra, Kurt on guitar, Joshua on uh, saxophone. Oh, I think it's Joshua's birthday tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Some you, Someone could fact check that. Um, but uh, if memory serves, I'm gonna say, I seem to remember his name uh, on some records with, uh, with E, so C and D. All right, so you answered E, C and D. And that is correct. Aaron Goldberg did indeed record and perform with both Kurt Rosenwinkel on guitar and saxophonist Joshua Ridman. So Brad is up six to four, Ross. Time to catch up. <laughs> Ross, bassist Chris Fun, who plays both acoustic, acoustic bass and bass guitar, has performed with Kenny Garrett, trumpeters Christian Scott Atunde Ajwa, and Sean Jones, among others. Chris Fun is a native of what city? Is Chris Fun from Cleveland, Ohio? A, B, New York City? C, Brooklyn, New York? D, Washington, D.C.? Or E, Baltimore, Maryland. Which of those cities is Chris Fun from? Yeah, I think I uh, met him once. I think I'm going to say E, Baltimore. That is correct. Chris Fun is a native of Baltimore, also known as Charm City. So, Brad, your turn. Brad, the new, the now, excuse me, the now 20-year-old pianist, Joey Alexander, whose recording is our Spotlight Recording of the Week. Joey Alexander, who first broke out on the scene as a preteen, was born in which of the following countries? Is Joey Alexander a native of Vietnam? A, B, Malaysia, C, India, D, Indonesia, or E, Pakistan? So uh, as the jazz curator at Tidal, um, it's really like my pleasure to listen to, can't listen to all of it, but I, you know, every week I get to listen to new jazz, jazz coming out that week. And it's really so fun. And I remember last year, Joey put out a new album that I was checking out some tunes, really great. Um, and if, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, he's from D, Indonesia. That is correct. I tell you, you guys are killing it today. Let's see what we can do with Ross next. Ross, you playing catch up now, Ross. Mm -hmm. Which of the following distinguished jazz ancestors toured and recorded with both the Duke Ellington and the Count Basie orchestras? Would that have been A, Johnny Hodges, B, Louis Belson, C, Lester Young, D, Clark Terry, or E, Joe Newman? Hmm. That's a very good question. I know it wasn't um, 
A. And that is a good question. We played with both Duke and, and Kanye. Played and toured with both. Yeah, played and toured with both. Um, that's very that's that's very interesting. I'm sweet. I'm thinking, meditating between two of the choices <laughs> based on based on what I'm remembering and what I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go with. Was it D? Was it Clark Terry? That's correct. The great trumpeter Clark Terry, trumpeter and flugelhornist Clark Terry, did indeed have a rich history of touring with both the Duke Ellington and Count Basie orchestras. So you are correct. That's right. Brad, the book Looking for Chet Baker was authored by which of the following writers? This should be right up your wheelhouse as a writer. Would that have been A, Bill Moody, B, Ashley Kahn, C, Howard Mandel, D, Art Lang, or E, Scott Yanna? Okay. Uh, hmm. Ashley Kahn, great writer, but I don't recall Ashley writing about Chet Baker. Right. He he wrote about Kind of Blue, some other things. Howard Mandel, great writer, but I don't recall him writing about Chet Baker. Uh, I'm trying to decide between a couple of these people. Scott Yana, I'm also familiar with, but I don't recall a Chet Baker book. Is it D. Art Lang? That is incorrect. Ross, with an opportunity to steal the point. Ross, the book Looking for Chet Baker was authored by which of the following writers? Would that have been A, Bill Moody, B, Ashley Kahn, C, Howard Mandel, and D, Art Lang has been eliminated, or E, Scott Yanow? Yeah, I'm consulting my memory bank again here. <laughs> <laughs> And um, that is sounding very familiar. I think I'm going to go with A, Bill Moody. That is correct. Bill Moody did indeed write the book Looking for Chet Baker. And Ross has stolen that point and gone ahead. So we're now into our bonus round. And as our trailer, Brad goes first. You ready, Brad? Let's do it. Ready to catch up? <laughs> All right. Author, critic, and songwriter Leonard Feather collaborated on the Biographical Encyclopedia of Jazz with which of the following distinguished writers? Would that have been A, Dan Morgenstern? B, Ira Gittler, C, Bob Blumenthal, D, Barry Kernfeld, or E, none of the above? This is another hard one. Uh, let's see. All great famous writers. Um, I want to say either Morgan Stern or Gittler. 
Uh, I'm going to say Gittler, B. That's correct, and you have successfully caught up. We are tied, which takes us to sudden death. <laughs> and Ross will go first in sudden death. Ross, the late jazz impresario George Ween founded the Newport Jazz Festival and was also instrumental in the founding of a number of festivals, including which of the following? A, the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. B, the Playboy Jazz Festival. C, the Newport Folk Festival. D, the JVC Jazz Festival. Or E, all of the above. And we will keep going till we get a correct answer. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's another good one. That's another good one. Um, uh, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's a. Even though I'm sure he he's been in New Orleans, <laughs> but um, I'm going to go with C, the Newport Folk Festival. That is the incorrect answer. Brad, sudden death. The late jazz impresario George Ween founded the Newport Jazz Festival and was also instrumental in the founding of a number of festivals, including which of the following? A, the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. B, the Playboy Jazz Festival. C, the Newport Folk Festival, that's ruled out. D, the JVC Jazz Festival. Okay, so. Or e, all of the above. Okay, so uh, I have only, of all of these, I've only been to the New Orleans Jazz Festival, and that was uh, extremely amazing. I believe uh, that he was uh, part of both New Orleans and Newport Folk. Um, so I'm going to say E, all of the above, and hope that it's also the other ones. That is indeed the correct answer. And Brad is our new champion. Congratulations to Brad Farberman on winning our 49th episode of Jazzology. And thank you, Russ Burnett. For Thank being you. such a good contestant on Jazzology, we will definitely have to have you back as a past champion. And we encourage each and every one of you to try your hand and play Jazzology. And if anyone watching would like to become a contestant on Jazzology, click the link below and simply fill out the form. You must be 18 years old or older. And be sure to follow us on social media at Jazzology Trivia Show get all the latest news and updates. Thanks so much to Russ and Brad and to everyone who joined us for our 49th episode of Jazzology today. Remember, you can check out Jazzology every other Friday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you miss the show live, you can find the archive on the Savage Content YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash at Savage Content. We will catch you on the next side for episode 50 of 